So the, the, the first time that you were made aware of anything that may have been going on was back in March 2012. Yes. And you got a call from Gemma's school. Yes, um, I received a call um, from the deputy head, which was also, she looked after child protection for the school. And um, she rang me up to um, talk to me about some welfare issues to do with my daughter that, um, that my daughter had confided in a teacher with. And, um, and they were welfare issues that I wasn't aware of. And um, so obviously I was extremely concerned about what, what they were. And in addition to that, she also mentioned that there had been rumours of um, that my daughter was having a relationship with a teacher because he had recently been um, to the, the trip that they went to America with the school and um, he, as a supportive gesture, is what I was told, held her hand because she was scared of flying. She said that, and then she went to go on to the subject more about the, the welfare issues, but I, I took her back to that question and said, well, hold on a minute, what do you mean? There was rumours, there's holding hands, what do you mean? And she completely reassured me that there was absolutely nothing on toward. Um, it was just a, you know, a, 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 it was just a supportive gesture to help my daughter. And although I was obviously shocked to hear what she had to say, I mean, I knew my daughter was petrified of flying. We'd spoken right up to the point that she'd boarded the flights. So I kind of had to take the reassurance that what she was telling me was fine. And, you know, um, but then obviously my then concern was the welfare issues. Well, uh, you took her to the doctor to make sure that she was yeah, OK, yeah. And, and she was. At the end of July, he called you, um, and you say that he was distraught. Yes, he, when he rang up, um, you know, he asked, confirmed who I was and said, apologised for having to call me and said that um, he, he wanted to speak to me about some rumours that were going around the school about a relationship that he was having with my daughter. He said that she's ruining my life, she's becoming a pain, she, um, she, the problem that it was is she wasn't squashing the rumours. So instead of saying, no, not true, she was just not, she wasn't, you know, dismissing anything. So his call was to beg and plead with me to get her to stop this from happening. Well, it... it... It didn't stop happening, um, and obviously there was a lot more going on behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, just before um, she uh, she vanished, a detective and a social worker arrived at the door to talk to you about it. And then in September, it's the September the twelfth, two thousand and twelve, and she's reported missing. Initially, you you didn't really think much about it. No, I mean, I'm a, f a full-time working mum and um, I go off to work before she goes to school, so those standard texts, I've had a few, and, you know, I've been able to call her and say, did you make it to school? And she would say, yes, I've been late. Um, so I wasn't alarmed when I initially got that first text. Um, I'd allowed her, first time, I don't normally allow my children to stay school nights out, but, you know, I'd allowed her to go and stay with a friend because previously we'd had quite a stressful day with the detective and everything turning up so um and uh, you know her friend is a really nice lovely girl